Hello, this is the second devlog I'm making about the game I'm doing for the Gothic Novel Jam. Um, I just want to show you a little bit of what I've been working on. And uh, I guess for myself as well, document a bit the process. Um, this is the... This is the game. I mean, it looks uh, more or less like uh, like it did last time. Two kind of realizations I've had since last time is one that the um, the system of having separate dialogue boxes to the sides for the characters who speak just didn't work at all. Um, I found that if you were playing, you either didn't notice what was happening in them, or you did notice and um, got distracted from the story. And by, time, by the time you'd read what happened in the little dialogue box and looked back at the story, the story had changed and now you'd lost your place. Even if, even if it had only like advanced to one line, you'd lost your place. And it, it was useless, so it wasn't working. So, um, it's a shame because I wanted to do something a bit more interesting than just having one text box with the story appearing in it. Um, but it's much better without those. So we've got rid of those. The second thing I realised is that these uh, the scenes, the illustrations, uh, are taking me a lot longer than I had hoped to do because of the, the parallax, parallax effect thing where... You know, it's just a time-consuming process to do that. Maybe because I'm not very good at it, but um, that's definitely the case. And so I sort of, um, I guess, come to the conclusion that probably I have to limit myself to about approximately 20 separate illustrations and therefore separate, 20 or so separate locations that the story can take place in and that's kind of fine because I was planning on using a bunch of sort of gothic -y, tropey locations the abandoned abbey the desolate moor all that kind of thing and kind of returning to them and so this I think forces me to be a bit more focused to pick 20 and stick to them and um I've got a list of the ones I want. It's about 35 long. So far I've made about seven or eight of them. And um, uh, my intention is to keep on making them until I've got somewhere between 15 and 20. And then write the stories based on the, based on the locations that I've made. And then hopefully have a little bit of leeway there to if I really need another location because of the story to to go back and do it. But anyway, this is um, I thought I'd just like show you the scenes that I've done. This is a sort of a debug interface that I've stuck on the front of the game to allow me to do things like this. Um, this is just a thing which will go through all of the different scenes that I've set up. So yeah, this is like standing stones in front of ruins kind of thing. This is a, a cellar. We got the standing stone again because, uh, because, because. That little jump there was just because I clicked too quickly. Um, it's, it tries to tra if it tries to transition too quickly, it, um, it fails that. I could quite easily correct that, although I think I won't bother because I know that when the story is doing it, it won't be trying to transition uh, very fast. This is some sort of barren room. I will put some sort of prop in there. Some sort of, some sort of. Similarly, this uh, attic, there'll be something in this attic. Possibly different things, uh, depending on how much time I have. If you come back to the attic, there'll be different stuff there. Uh, incidentally, like the story, the broad strokes of the story is all done. I wrote the end in the outline and the beginning is finished. And um, I know how to get from one to the other. I don't know exactly 
all of the different events and a lot of what's going to happen in the story will depend on the the time that I have. Yeah, time limitations are basically what determines that. Little hallway and the drawing room, both of which I guess you saw in the last video because they were the first two that I did. Uh, street, and I think that's the last one. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if this is interesting to anybody, but uh, for my own documentation, I guess, to the process that I use to create these kind of things starts with an image like that. Let me actually... This is a, this, I'm getting all these images, uh, maybe with one or two exceptions, from the British Library Archive of Public Domain images that they have on um, Flickr. Which is a little bit frustrating because the search is kind of bad and Flickr is not the best interface to browse these things with, but... Um, that's where all of the pictures are coming from. And they all kind of start off more or less like that. Um, obviously I come in and I get rid of people mostly because uh, the people are going to be external from the pictures. The characters are going to be there. Uh, and in this case I've removed Stonehenge and turned it into some kind of more generic ruins because I don't really want Stonehenge sitting in the picture. Uh, and then it all needs cutting into layers. So uh, this is a layer, and this is a layer, and this is a layer. And this is the time consuming bit now because the bits of the layers that don't exist, well, the cutting out takes a while, and then the, the painting of the bit of the, every layer stacks on top of another one, but the one on top will move, so you've got to paint under the, the layer that you cut out. So all of the stuff, the edges at the bottom, you can see it really in this one, that all of the bottom of this was not in the original picture. So in that image, all of this, all of this has been painted over to extend the, the landscape down. And, um, and then the sky. And that's it. The, I, my system that I've built only can deal with a maximum of four layers, which is mostly to limit myself and make everything a little bit less time consuming. But the majority of images that I've done uh, have two or three. Three is the most common number of layers. And then in, um, in Unity, the way that it's all set up is, uh, where are we? So yeah, this is the scene you just saw, and then in Unity, this is how it's set up. It's like a, a whole set of four different um, canvases, each of which has one of those layers on, and they're arranged three-dimensionally, and when the, when the camera moves, you, an illusion of some amount of perspective is created. This is an old, old hat, I guess, to everyone. But this is kind of my multi-plane camera type idea and then the way that I'm doing the scene transitions is that I actually have two setups here so I have two sets of layers it, two cameras as well uh, camera one camera two and then the actual real scene that you're seeing is over here and so this scene has all of the UI stuff on it and then it has like a like a screen here and there's a camera looking at all of that. So, let me show, I don't know, if I start actually playing this. Uh, where are we? So, it's, or it's looking at this one. It can see all of this, but it's got a transition over here. And right now, I don't remember what the first scene is, the cellar, right? So right now it's not showing the cellar, it's showing the, the hallway. So if I click continue, it's gonna load in the hallway. It also repositions and rescales all of the scene, all of the uh, canvases, because depending on the picture, they've gotta be set up differently. And meanwhile, over here, we get a transition from one 
uh, like screen to another and they physically move and they change transparency. So if I do it again, you can see this one's fading in and moving forwards. The other one's fading out. Um, this one crosses the previous one after it's become transparent and then after it's transparent, that one goes to the back, um, which you can see. Oops. There you go. Floop. It, it flips itself to the back. I don't know why I animate that, actually. It should just jump, but for some reason I animate it. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's it, really. That's kind of how it works. I don't know if this is a good system. It was the first thought I had to get this effect, and I put it... I implemented it and and it worked so it's good I guess I don't know what the consequences of having three cameras rendering at the same time and there isn't any lighting or anything uh, there's no um, sort of complicated shaders or anything in my game but there are multiple layers of stuff stacked on top of it a lot of transparency and all these different cameras and i don't know i just don't know if that's like if that will work on you know machines with integrated graphics and that kind of thing uh, i guess i should work out a way to test that and uh, i don't know anyway um that's kind of what I wanted to say. I've witted on for way too long. Um, things are going well. Like I said, the pictures are taking longer than I thought, and that's kind of made me rescale a bit the, the scope of the story and rethink a bit about the, the process and all that. Um, and But yeah, I'm, I'm progressing along, and I'm pretty happy with how it's going. I think I should have plenty of time to to get what I want done done. I have one sort of big programming problem that I haven't managed to solve yet. But yesterday I had two big programming problems to solve and I, I got one of them done yesterday morning. So fingers crossed the other one will also go smoothly. I also have to like really rework the way that the story timing worked. I'd built a back when I had the dialogue appearing in separate panes. I had um, I built a fairly sophisticated timing system where the the story sent messages to Unity to say wait before before displaying more. And I was using that both to kind of get some rhythm and pace to the story um, and to allow for like transitions between scenes to happen without you having to read text while it was going on. But also, and probably principally, to get the dialogue and the story to work so that you had enough time to notice the dialogue was happening, read it, look back at the story before it started. And that's kind of what, what broke the whole thing. That's why I decided it wasn't working. That's why I decided to change that. So right now, the timing is a bit of a mess. It leaves all these gaps in the story which shouldn't really be there. And in fact, like it was already, the way I'd implemented it was already starting to groan under the strain. And so I think I'm going to make a different system which works differently. And I, I don't know how to do that exactly, but we'll get there. Anyway, I said I was going to stop. I'm going to stop. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.